everybody. Thanks for joining us under the apple tree. This episode features an introduction to the orchard and the garden with some history and a little bit of a tour. We also respond to some viewer questions regarding dealing with pests in the garden and yard. Today's music is by Jeff Hennendale, a local musician. He sat down with Ross, they talked and jammed, and uh, this was the result. Our focus, after all, is about supporting local endeavors of all kinds. If you would like to be featured in an episode, just let us know. Jeff did an awesome job, and I really love what his music contributed to the episode. Uh, you can catch Jeff at the, uh, with the Outpatients at Stadium View July 23rd from 6 to 9, and July 26th from 5 to 8 at Jimmy C's. And he has a solo gig at John Muir Park from 3 to 4 on July 25th. Uh, wow, he's a busy guy. Uh, try to check out one of the shows. I'm sure you'll dig it. Well, sit back and enjoy some great music and beautiful imagery. And stick around for an important announcement regarding a new show. The history of this property goes back nearly 100 years. The house was built in 1921 by my wife's ancestors. In the 1950s, the orchard started producing enough apples to sell to local grocery stores. In this part of the yard, you can still see some of the pavers that were sunk into the ground in order to support the weight of the produce trucks as they loaded the harvest. We are looking at a bumper crop of apples this year. Apple crops tend to fluctuate in cycles of two to three years. This is in large part due to the pruning schedule. This year will be remarkable for us because we aggressively pruned two years ago. This limited the crop for a while, but this year may rival our best harvest in terms of weight. On our best year, the orchard produced over a half a ton of apples. This year I'm hoping to get as much or more. We have two pear trees, one producing fruit with red skin, the other is of the green variety. The oldest of the two pear trees bears red fruit that, while not much to look at, is very soft and sweet. The green pears are very crisp and refreshing. Our two cherry trees are of the sweet Bing cherry variety. They tend to have a rough time every year though. It seems that they blossom and the next day there's a windstorm, which severely limits the size of the crop. If you're lucky, a few cherries will get fertilized, but there's usually not enough time for blossom to windstorm. This season we have harvested a few dozen cherries, which have been a great early summer treat. We also have a plum tree which is in its first season, so it's not quite producing anything. The garden holds as much history as the orchard, some plants having roots back some 50 years. Our production goal for this year is to grow enough to preserve and enjoy well into next winter. Next year, we will double our growing space, which will allow us to produce enough to sell at markets. This year we planted our crops in rows. In the north half of the garden, we have four rows of raspberries, carrot and asparagus patches, and shady lettuce rows. The grapes, pumpkin, watermelon, rhubarb, and excess raspberries border this edge. The south side has six tomato varieties. Beets, peas, hot and mild peppers, beans, and broccoli. Then many rows of strawberries. We inherited the strawberries and enjoy eating and preserving their bounty. The final section has cucumbers, more green beans, sunflowers, eggplant, radishes, and room to adopt a few more plants. The peas are growing in a cage to protect them from rabbits. The cages work very well this year. Sometimes these pests drive you to try some crazy things. In an effort to kill and deter insects, I use a homemade solution of dish soap, olive oil, cinnamon, chili, and garlic. The Japanese beetle has been a plague in recent years for this part of the country. My hope is that this sprayed solution will help keep them away while protecting the apples from blemishes caused by pests. This solution is safe to be used on all parts of the garden. However, it will irritate eyes and skin, so remain upwind while spraying. Another approach to pest control is to strengthen the plants through use of both compost and compost tea. Our compost tea is steeping with plant trimmings, sticks, and a shovel or two from the composter. We will give that a few days and spray it on the trees and larger plants. For larger pests, we fence the garden in 
hang disposable pie plates from posts. These blow in the wind and make a noise that frightens away some small animals. Also hanging from the posts in wrapped cheap pantyhose are chunks of Irish spring silk. There is an ingredient specific to this brand which deters deer, rabbit, and other small animals. Weed prevention and fighting has been a costly battle for us. The downside of inheriting an older established garden like this is that some weeds have definitely taken root, so to speak. We do our best to pick and hoe weeds, but this year we took more drastic measures. We layered soil, black and white print newspaper, grass clippings and straw, and some compost. We repeated this until we had added about 10 inches to the level of soil. This helps to build up depleted soil. The newspaper is a great weed blocker as it does not allow weeds to penetrate. We have had minimal weed infestation in the areas where we instituted this practice. A garden this size requires a lot of water. Even the trees get thirsty in the dog days of summer. In order to make less of an environmental impact, we harvest rainwater in two barrels from the eaves of the garage. This helps offset the amount of water we would otherwise use from municipal sources. In the interest of a great episode and saving more water, we intend to add the house roof as a collection source by the end of the fall. Man, I really like how that episode came together. Uh, amazing work by Jeff Hennendale. Thanks again for sharing your music with us. Uh, remember to check Jeff or the outpatients out at one of these here gigs. I also want to thank Ross, Luke, and Adam for all their hard work in making this such a fun and creative endeavor. Uh, it's, and it has so, such potential, or at least in my mind it does. Uh, watch tomorrow for a premiere of our second show on the channel, At the Market with Chef Todd. Adam and I hung out at the Green Bay Farmer's Market and talked to a few people about what they bought and what they're making at, with their market finds. It was a ton of fun, and folks' passion for food and local produce really shines through. Follow us on Twitter, at Apple Tree Show. Maybe a question you pose will be featured in an episode. Subscribe to the Under the Apple Tree channel. It's a great way to make sure that you don't miss anything. And uh, join us next week, where we make some fresh summer coleslaw with balsamic dressing and put it on an awesome fry bread taco. Uh, check out the market tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time under the apple tree.